Hi everybody, today I'm here in West Branch, Iowa, which is a very small town not far from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I'm here to visit the final resting place of the 31st President of the United States, Republican Herbert Hoover. He had the very bad timing of being elected president just shortly before the 1929 stock market crash, which led to the decade-long Great Depression here in the United States. President Herbert Hoover's gravesite is straight ahead up on the hill with a flag. And I just noticed this informational marker here that says Hoover gravesite. President Herbert Hoover died in New York City on October 20th, 1964 at the age of 90. So that makes him one of the longest living U.S. presidents. Five days later, his body was interred on this hillside overlooking his birthplace and presidential library a symbolic vista of his journey from birth to death. The remains of Lou Henry Hoover, who died January 7, 1944, were moved from California and placed beside her husband. Their son, Alan, selected the gravesite. The two plainly inscribed gravestones reflect Quaker simplicity. The presidential library is right over here, and I just walked over directly from the parking lot. And I've seen quite a few people walking their dogs here this morning, so I guess this is a, a nice walking trail for dog walkers as well, and, and exercisers. I'm finding that many of the presidential gravesites are utilized by walkers and runners and exercisers and dog walkers. It's kind of nice that they're actually practical as well. Now, even though this may be considered modest compared to some of the U.S. president gravesites, it's definitely very, very grand compared to many of them. These are very simple, surprisingly modern looking for when he was buried. Although I guess 1960s modernism was pretty popular design style. So I guess this does fit with that period. Now it just looks kind of timeless. It's a little difficult to read the inscriptions above. And now that I can see them, I see it's pretty much just the same, their names and dates of birth and death. They were both born in the same year, 1874. If he was 90, then that, when he died, then I guess that makes her around 70 when she died. A couple of fun facts about the president. One was that, well, I don't know if this is fun, but interesting. He was an orphan. And I think he's the only president who was an orphan. He also spoke Chinese. Now, I know, I remember Nixon received a lot of praise for being, I think, the first president to visit China. It's kind of interesting that quite a few years before him, Hoover actually spoke Chinese. I don't think Nixon ever spoke Chinese. I'm sure he had a translator. Like the Gerald Ford gravesite that I just visited a few days ago, or a couple days ago, and Ronald Reagan's gravesite, Herbert Hoover's gravesite, is also open to the public. So if you don't have the time or the interest or the money to visit the presidential library and museum, you can still see his gravesite free of charge. You just park in the parking lot and take the trail this direction. Now, it's funny because they don't have any in the parking lot. I didn't see any arrows pointing this direction. I just looked on my Find a Grave app on my phone and saw where the gravesite was located. There was a GPS and I could see where I was parked, so I knew it was in this general direction. So I just started walking over here. I saw people walking their dogs and just exercising, so I thought there must be a trail over this way, but it's not really publicized. So I'm going to walk around a little bit. It's only about 8.45. They don't open until 9 o'clock, so I'm still I'm here early. And I do want to go through the museum and take the tour of his birth home. And in another connection to Nixon, in a way, Hoover was born right in that house right there. And he's buried right here. So he's a little bit further away from the house where he was born than Nixon. Nixon was born just a few yards away from where he's laid to rest. This is a little bit further, but pretty neat that you can see the house where he was born from his gravesite. I can't think of too many other presidents that I've visited that can say that. Some are fairly close, but I think Hoover, Nixon, LBJ, Lyndon B. Johnson, you can see his house from his gravesite, and it's, well, it might be the same distance as this. I think it's a little bit closer. So those are at least three presidents that I can think of whose gravesites I've visited and whose homes are viewable from their graves. I think that's pretty awesome and definitely not real common, I don't think among famous people and presidents.
Okay, so I just noticed something kind of funny, kind of typically American. So from Herbert Hoover's gravesite, you can actually see a McDonald's. Look at this. I mean, I always find it interesting what you can see from someone's gravesite. But as funny and strange and unusual as it might be to see a McDonald's sign from a cemetery or someone's gravesite, it's even more unusual and surprising, at least in my experience, to see an outhouse from a gravesite, especially a famous gravesite and especially a U.S. president's gravesite. But off in the distance, just to the left of the home where Hoover was born, is the family outhouse. And I'm going to walk over there in a minute to give you a closer look and to show you how you can also see the grave sites from the outhouse. But even more surprising is that this is not the only presidential grave site where you can see a president's former outhouse. When I visited Lyndon Johnson's grave site a couple of weeks ago at the beginning of this road trip, I noticed that you could see his birthplace and his family outhouse from his grave site as well. And his is even closer than Hoover's. You know, it never occurred to me that many of our, maybe most of our U.S. presidents used outhouses. This was LBJ's outhouse. I also didn't realize that he was buried just yards away from his birthplace. I don't know if, can you see the outhouse right there? I don't know if that's the original outhouse. It looks like it probably could be or maybe a replica. The house is actually a replica. They had to reconstruct it, but it's the exact site where he was born. And the house almost looks exactly the way it did when it was originally built by, I think it was his grandfather or great-grandfather, someone in the family, years before he was born. He was born in this house and he's buried right there with those, where the clump of trees are right there. So that's where he's laid to rest, just yards away from the home where he was born. There are a few other presidents who were buried not far from the house where they were born, but when I visited their graves and their houses, I didn't notice any outhouses. Out of curiosity, I just Googled it and found an article about George Washington's outhouses. Apparently, George Washington's Mount Vernon home had a number of outhouses on the property, and one of them is even on display and open to the public to view, not to use. And somehow, even though I spent about a half a day at Mount Vernon, I miss seeing George Washington's outhouse. Have any of you seen it? I'll be sharing my full-length visits to George Washington's gravesite and also LBJ's gravesite in future videos. So this is just a preview of those upcoming videos. I was also curious to know when the first indoor toilet was installed at the White House. President Andrew Jackson was the first to have indoor plumbing at the White House in 1833, but for some reason it wasn't until 20 years later in 1853 during President Millard Fillmore's administration before the White House installed its first real flushable toilet. Fillmore was the 13th U.S. president, which means that while they were in the White House, the 12 presidents before him all had to rely on hand basins, pitchers, and chamber pots when nature called, since I'm pretty sure that the White House itself never had a real outhouse. Now let's walk over to the tiny cottage where Hoover was born, so you can see his outhouse up close, and you can also see the view of the grave sites from his outhouse. So this is the tiny cottage straight ahead where he was born and where he lived as a child. The flag that you see there to the left of the house is his gravesite where we were just standing, and you can also clearly see the two gravestones. And as you can see, just to the right of the house is the family outhouse. Right behind Herbert Hoover's house, here is his outhouse. And then just to the left of his house here is his final resting place. The doors of the cottage are open now for self-guided tours, so let's go in and take a look around, and then we can go into the backyard and get a closer look at the outhouse. Did any of you grow up in a house with an outhouse? I grew up in California back in the late 1950s and 1960s, and I didn't see or use my first outhouse until I was around 10 years old. And I remember it like it was yesterday. It was the mid-1960s, and our family took a road trip back to Tennessee and Kentucky to visit relatives, and most of them did have outhouses. I noticed a chimney outside, but I don't see a fireplace in here. I suppose it was this here. Seems like a very small 
the fireplace. I don't see anything in here, but maybe it was in there and they just blocked it off. Wow, no kitchen. That's interesting. <laughs> I I wonder where they what's back here, maybe there's more. Well, wow, this is so neat to think that his father built this. Okay, so that must be a cellar down there. And maybe the kitchen was out here, I guess. Yeah. Oh yeah, so it was sort of like out on the patio. The stove, I guess because of the heat and everything. Isn't that amazing? Probably had hardwood floors at the time, I guess. It says tight and cozy. That's for sure, but really cute. With two adults and three children, the Hoovers did not have much room for furnishings, and they had even less room in the winter when they brought the wood stove inside from the summer kitchen on the back porch. The porch also may have served as a woodshed, storeroom, and spare bedroom. The furnishings reflect Lou Hoover's interpretations of her husband's birthplace. So that's with the stove inside. So maybe that's what this was for. Maybe it wasn't really a fireplace. It was just like a flue. I mean, maybe this is where they hooked up uh, that post. But where would it go? There's nothing really there. So, yeah, something's been a little bit changed here. So either was, there was a small fireplace or a place for the, the smoke to escape out of the top when this was used as heating and cooking. This is just so cute and cozy is definitely the word for it. But you know, you don't really need much more than this, do you? These days we have a million more things than we need and our garages are usually packed with things that we bought and don't use. In here they just had to only have the things they absolutely needed. Okay, so let's head out into the backyard now and take a look at the outhouse. And there it is, looking quite a bit nicer than LBJ's outhouse. And then to the left is the view of the Hoover's grave sites. If the trees and the bushes weren't in the way, it would be a direct view from the outhouse to the grave site. And I don't know about you, but I think outhouses are a very important part of American history. And I'm really glad they've kept them here, at least at these two president grave sites. Finally, if you want a quick peek into his one-room schoolhouse, keep watching. This week I want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to my newest Patreon supporter, Kelly Foster, and also to Kathleen Williams and Sue, who very generously donated to my channel using YouTube's new thanks button that's located under the video. YouTube just allowed me to activate this button last week. So thank you, Kelly, Kathleen, and Sue, for your very kind donations to my channel. They are all very much appreciated. I also appreciate all of you who have taken the time to subscribe to my channel. Without all of you, I wouldn't even have a YouTube channel, so that really means a lot as well. As always, thanks for joining me on another historic road trip to the past, and until our next trip to the cemetery together, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.